Hello, Jun. Hello, Phil. And hello, all the rest of you out there. And welcome to this how to play presentation of Pax Hispanica. Yeah, the latest Pax game. Yeah. Basically, I started with um, Lords of the Spanish Main, which was like, I think, 2006 or so. And um, tried to make it uh, more in the tradition of PAX games and with a loftier uh, design goal or vision of trying to express how the Caribbean could have been if you know we had some really outstanding, strong willed individuals um, fighting for it. That's sort of the thesis behind yeah. PAX Hispanica and the victory condition. And the victory conditions of them, which in traditional Pax uh, tradition is um, you know, different victory conditions for different uh, end states. And the players get to try, during the course of the game, pick what, uh, what end yeah. state they're going to be. In the grab the victory style. Grab the victory style. It's instantaneous. Um, it's a little bit different from other PAX games. I mean, they've always been individuals, but now we pretty much define the life and career of your character. Um, I'm hoping that this will generate more stories. Yeah, definitely. But you are still an individual. Uh, yeah, you are still an individual. You start out as a teenager, and you um, actually the starting year is fifteen ninety eight. Yes, just a couple years um, before, or four years before the historical span of time called Pax Hispanica. Um, pretty much the time when. Spain kept the police as a global policeman, and it was about the last time they, they really dictated how how things in Europe and the New World went. Because of that, the name of the game, and this is the uh, from many play tests. Yeah, it's a little bit. It, there, there was some traveling. Spanish canon involved yeah, here, and, and traveling throughout uh, the Nordic. Anyway, so this is the the box cover and the name and the logo. Right. Yes. Done by Annie, who's not uh, in the picture because she's doing more important stuff. More important stuff, exactly. So, um, what do you know about the uh, Age of Piracy? Uh, well, I, I know uh, considerably a lot more now after working on this game. Um, and I know, well, quite a bit, but, but uh, that's a different story. So this is the game. How do you play it? Okay, I want to mention one more thing, and that's asymmetry. Yes, that's a, that was a, an initial design goal. Yes, uh, I thought, I think you told me I had to do it this way. Yeah, that was... Uh, um, all right, so um, during this period, it's called the Spanish Main, and... Um, this is a Caribbean area, and uh, everything is owned by Spain. So the Spanish player, the, the player of Spanish heritage, in this game Bartolomé de las Casas, has a considerable head start on the other players. The other players, since everything's owned by Spain, the other players, if they want to start a mission in Cuba or, or a colony in Venezuela, They've got to kind of do it on the sly. They've got to um, sort of sneak in and bribe the local officials and make themselves useful. So um, the players um, are very much individuals with their own individual courses, but they do have different nationalities. We've got a two-player game set up here with Sir Walter Raleigh, um, a British sea dog. Um, a really tragic Elizabethan um, figure, and as I mentioned, the Spanish monk, who um, uh, really was the world's first abolitionist um, activist. So, what do you know about this board? 
Yeah, so this is where you have your, your um, this is that maps your career, so to speak. Uh, of uh, you have the, uh, one pawn of each player here, and then you uh, start in this brown area in the middle, which is brown at the moment, uh, in which you are a teenager. Uh, it's early on, and you try to move out into these different careers. Uh, and the, there are ways to also shift places with others and, and you know interfere with others' plans. Uh, and Those are called get, sword fights. Sword fights, you can do marriages. You can oh, do marriages, there's uh, duels and um, prestigious. Um, well, yeah, maybe. A and then you go out to one of these uh, far ends of these tracks, and that's where you can grab the victory condition of that far end. Right. Uh, if you if you go there and you fulfill what needs to be fulfilled, then you you win. But you can I mean go here and then later on in the game change career. Yes, yes. You, you can go from being uh, one thing to another. Uh, in the, the careers here available is a buccaneer or pirate more or less. Uh, the, the those who build societies, those who build uh, cathedrals and, and missions, and uh, the King's man to become yes. royal. Yeah, part of the court. Yeah, I, I don't know. How many um, pirate games are there out there that have a midlife crisis as one of their game mechanisms? I think there are one, this one. <laughs> I see. Yeah, so there are two things that can happen here. You can you can suffer a mutiny, uh, which doesn't... It could be, I mean, it's, it's thematically obvious if you're a pirate, but it's in the other ones you lose the respect from, from your... The different uh, um, people you have tied to that your, you that you've hired basically you hire mercenaries yeah. and followers and whatever yeah and then you can they, then you can be kicked around in this one from from that um. so this is a philosophy and they've got four decks of cards associate each one associated with a different profession which is this is also in the market which yeah, is which yeah is this is usually available in in or usual part of or packs games so in this tax game, the market has four piles, and they are integrated with your own, uh, you know, um, development on the board in areas called sway and reach. Ah, uh, yes, sway and reach. These are the two most important personal characteristics of characters. Um, is sway and reach. Let's look at Wally here. That's what we call Sir Walter Wally in our yeah. play testing. Wally. Um, right now has a sway of one and a reach of one. But supposing uh, he manages to build a colony, which is represented by discs, and he might build one right here in St. Thomas in the uh, Leeward Islands. Now his sway has increased and he's got a colony. Uh, these cubes I should mention that all these components are were thrown together by scrounging old games. So they're not. Um, they're it's not only final. Four. Yeah, we're, in fact, nothing I say is final. No, that's uh, as it always is. Uh, yeah, because this is really an intense development right now. Um, it changes minute by minute um, as I get the playtest um, reports in. And we've got some really enthusiastic people working on it. But um, one thing that will probably not sail through unharmed is sway and reach. If you start um, a mission, you increase your reach. So I'm going to start a mission here in Florida. So his first task is to learn the language so that he can preach the word of God to the um, uh, Kalos here, the Colossian um, kingdom, and um, he's got to then educate them, teach them how to read and write, because at this time um, the Caribbean native peoples were illiterate, except for a few very rare surviving um, Mayan scribes in the Yucatan. So that's one of the professions in the game is a missionary. I'll just mention what um, sway and reach mean for the game. Sway is the number of cards you can hold in your hand. 
and it's the number of actions that you can play on every card. But the missions are in a column here on the left side, yeah, the left side of the card. So there's four of them on this particular mission card. There is one, uh, establish a mission, two, literacy, three, another literacy, and four, a melting pot. So if these are these are really actions that you do on the card. So each card have two, three, or four actions, and your reach tells you how many of these actions you can select to do when you play the card. Yeah, except I got it mixed up. This sway is how many actions you can do. All right. Sorry. And reach is how many cards you draw in a yeah, professional how many draw. draw from the, yeah. All right. Okay, back to class. Back to class. <laughs> okay, so these two parameters are very significant, and Spain's huge advantage is they start with eight colonies. Here's a typical Spanish colony. This is in Cartagena, um, presently the capital of Colombia, and an important uh, uh, entrepot and center of Spanish trade. Now, um, this purple disc, if it should be sacked by pirates, would go back into the sway column um, and Spain would have a, a setback and they wouldn't be producing any more quicksilver, um, which is necessary for the mining of silver, for the amalgamation of silver. Um, I also should mention pretty early on that I've tried to integrate um, missions and colonies in some kind of synergy here. They depend on each other. Uh, basically, the missions will provide labor. So let's, uh, let's just look on the turn, I think, the sequence of play. Now we know a bit of the background. Yes, we do game. know a oh, bit yes. of the background. And so I'll go through a typical turn. Typical but the, turn. But there's, um, yeah, I'll just go through a typical turn. I haven't talked about boats and how they move and stuff like that, but we'll go through. We'll come to a sail phase. Yeah. So we're, each of these turns is one year, and we have a goods year, an auction year, a play year, and a sale year. And then we start over with another goods, auction, play, and sale. And we're starting, as we said, in the... Um, very early 17th century and the game the long game can go to westphalia or the short game to prague but normally somebody will grab an instant victory before that happens and so typically we'll we'll end up in the um you know 1630s or or so when the characters if they're starting as teenager uh, might be in like the prime, 40. Yeah, prime yeah. Middle ages, somewhere. Yeah, somewhere. So, and this starts in the late uh, fifth, 16th century, actually. It's 1598 here. Yeah. Uh, and each each turn or so have four phases. Is that the name of it in the room? Uh, we call them years. Years, all right. So, each turn have four years, and every player completes the year, and then we move on to the next year. Uh, and so, the first, um, uh, first turn here, you have uh, year one is always a, a goods year, correct? Which means you populate the map with goods. It's basically a maintenance phase. There's yeah. not not very many player decisions no. here. And then you you take these are treasures, and here it says it's soul, right, and pearls. Correct. So you place a pearl thing out on next to the colony here. Yeah, in the production or, or they'll st they'll stack, but um, these. Yeah. Uh, so this represents a treasure of pearls. This is the Pearl Coast of Venezuela. So mm, treasure is going to be generated here. And the way to get it, this is all an export economy. All these treasures are supposed to be exported to Europe. So um, during the course of the game, some players will be grabbing treasure and moving it to Europe. Other um, players will be trying to intercept it and grab the treasure for themselves. Yeah, and uh, uh, and that's pirates. <laughs> and then, so we right. place one here uh, for the pearls, and that's yes. stated that it's always there if it's pearls. 
And over here is Seoul, so we'll place one there. Yeah, let's place it by the colony though. Yeah, good, good point. Uh, and that's, that's it. Yep, that's it for the first turn, or the first year, I should say. First year of, of the first turn. And then we have something called auction, and that usually takes a longer time. And then each player, in turn, player order, choose one card here to auction. All right, so let's demonstrate that. Um, are you Wally? I'm Wally. Okay, and I'm Bart. Okay. You're Bart. So, um, in the turn order, which is specified here, we're in a uh, we're during the Anglo-Spanish War, so we go from the most righteous to the um, least righteous. And on this track, that's righteous to this way, and it says righteous here as well. So you look, the player who is the most closest to this side is the starting player. It happens to be uh, Bart now, yes. and then Wally is here. Um, all right, yeah, so that there is, by looking at the relative positions on the philosophy, you can tell on the sequence of play, and it's also, I mean, not the sequence of play. The play the order. player or, thank you, thank you, Wally. Um, that's also useful in a few other mechanics, but, so, um, I have to choose a card to auction. It's got to be the top card of one of these four. I've got two gold. Um, normally you start with the amount of gold equal the number of players in the game. So this is going to be a blind auction. Are, are you paying attention? I am paying attention. Okay. So I am going to decide uh, what I want. And really, without a ship, you know, if I have a ship, um, I'm able to, to grab treasure and get an early start in in money. So this particular ship. No, 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 not that one. Well, you <laughs> pistols or swords at dawn, Wally. <laughs> um, so you wanted the ship. I want to bid on this ship. And then you take this card and say, "This is up for auction." Right. So a little bit like High Frontier, if you're, but it's blind. Um, so this ship is, it's got two actions on it, but one of the actions on a ship card, and all the ships are in the Buccaneer profession. Uh, one of the actions is always to get a ship. We don't have any ships to start. Just like one of the actions on every colony card is to build a colony. And every action on uh, a missionary card, one of the actions, the top action, uh, typically, or always, is um, to build a mission. And this last one is the royalty deck, and that gives you peerage. Peerage is noble titles like duke and lord and cardinal, stuff like that. So, let's see who gets this. I've got two gold. I'm going to secretly put my bid into my right hand. One, two, three, reveal. Aha. We both bid one. As the initiator of the bid, well, are you paying attention? I'm paying attention. You are the initiator of the bid, and that's, you have the advantage of uh, tie breaking. So you win. I guess he was paying attention yeah, for once. Yeah. And you take that to your hand? This goes to my hand. So I'm not getting a ship yet. And, um, and now it's my turn to, to... One thing that we should do, though, we should give each of us a Haven card. Now, I haven't explained what Haven cards are, but let's just say your starting hand starts with two of them at random. So, and they're kept in this Haven's deck right here. And that's something you, you dealt from the start. Yeah, you're dealt from the start. And we'll see how these Haven cards are useful pretty soon. And I also want to have a ship, I believe. So I'm going to... How unimaginative. I know. So I'm going to auction, auction off this ship. And that would be the same, same uh, procedure if I sh choose any of the others. Uh, I could later on, when I come into one of these blue tracks, instead just grab the top card. Uh, yeah, because, yeah, and that's that's where this reach comes in. So if I have a reach of of two, that that your 
You have you, sh you shouldn't have a one of these out. Or... I start with a con. No, I don't start with no. a con. And uh, actually, I'm the red one. Then. So, but so this one goes back. But um, I would have had if I get one out, I get the reach of two, and then I get two cards. I just take them. No auction. But as long as I am a teenager here, it's it's the uh, only auction, and I can always auction out things as well. And the reach thing is only available in your shows and profession. Uh, having said that, I want to auction off the top card here, and uh, I want to bid on this card. Okay, so this is a Conquistador H. Now, um, I can tell that because the very top line of it says Conquistador. Uh, mine is a Plunder I. So this is a little bit unfortunate mm, because yeah. it's in it's in the alphabetical order. There, there are twenty five ships. Yeah, twenty five ships, and they are uh, labeled from A through Z, and it's just as simple as that. That A beats B, B beats C. So this is a little bit stronger. The uh, the H ship is a bit stronger than the I ship. If we should ever come to blows on the open yeah, sea, and it could be uh, you can have two boats, uh, two ships, and you have only one. There are many other things, but but in in you know in its core, this is slightly better than your ship. Yeah. So the legality is important too, just to tell um, how a ship picks up treasure. I mean, there's a difference. I, I have to explain these things to you, Wally. But there's a difference. From going in and saying, here I'm on official business from the King of Spain, uh, hand over your, your treasure and uh, you'll be rewarded for it, etc, etc. Or coming in with um, guns and sabers and burning the whole place down and then picking through those smoldering ruins. Yeah, um, yes. <laughs> all right. All right, so you, you want to beat something with this one. All right, I'm going to beat two. So ready, set, go. And now I bid one and I win this, uh, and you bid one, and I am, since I was the instigator of this, I will get that card. Let me just mention that had I had more gold and I bid two, I would have won the bid, but I would have had to give him both of those to you rather than to the bank. Yes, so if the, someone else than the instigator or, or the one putting the card out for auction wins, the money goes to, to, to the one putting it out. And otherwise, if you put it out and buy it yourself, the money goes to the bank. All right, we're going to move into the play phase, which is 1600, the turn of the century. And this is the third step of a standard turn? Yeah, so this is uh, year three. Now we get the play, and we're beginning with Spain. That's me. Um, and also, on this time track here, which is, which is central to, to the game, uh, how, how the game is progressing, there is some, sometimes a special ability or special effect. And on this particular... An event, you an might event, call them, although the game is. calls them omens, just to be a little period, uh, period yeah, yeah. But, And they are always the same in... in, in uh, the this. order is the same. Although I'll mention that in the components list, we have little uh, counters to cover these. So if you want to play with variable events, yeah. you can. You can play with variable events. So, so uh, and in this one it says that uh, in this particular turn all players have a sway of four. So yes. all players can play four things on their cards. Right? And hold four cards hold in their hands. Yes. Uh, so and you that's, start because you are the starting player. Right. So I'm going to what I let me just say the strategy. I, I know I'm supposed to say how to play. But the most important thing for me uh, is getting a job. Oh, yes, I'd like to play a ship and get money and stuff like this. But if you're just, you know, sitting around in your hut, drinking your parents' beer or whatever for the rest of your life, you're probably not going to win games. Um, so I've got to get a job. So I'm going to reveal my cards here. I've got two Haven cards and I've got uh, one ship. So I can play them in any order. And you can play any number of cards. Any like number of cards. Um, so you can save turn. them, although, you know, you have to, at the end of your play phase, your hand limit is enforced, so you have to play down to it. 
So I haven't explained how you maneuver on this map, but there is an important icon in the upper right corner of the cards called the nudge. And there's four directions, four, the four or compass directions, um, either north towards colonists or um, west towards buccaneers, south royalists, east towards missionary. And mine has a nudge of towards buccaneer, so to the west. Now, this is unfortunate because you're in the way. That's really not a problem. If you nudge into somebody, uh, you just switch places in a procedure called a duel. We fought a duel and we switched places. But the problem is I'm still not in a profession. If you're in Calo, um, you're going to run out of money. Uh, you can try to depend on treasure from your ships or something but you won't be able to professional draw like um, Wally was explaining earlier. Professional draw means you skip the auction and get to draw without spending money in your profession. And this is really an early goal of the game is to get a job, you know, otherwise you could go to debtor's prison or, or get shanghaied into some pirate ship and swabbing the decks that's what typically happens to you, isn't it? No, I don't think so, actually. All right. So I've got other cards, though, with actions on them. And I think it's best for me to play this one first, this Haven card. So this was this how, it, how it was. Yes, that's how it looks. So I want to be a professional pirate. And... Um, so a prestigious marriage, that means that by throwing, playing this card, and I'll discard it into the Haven deck, it'll get shuffled in, that I manage to marry into <laughs> some pirate lass, I guess. Um, I've seen this movie, you yeah, know. Um, yeah, yeah, definitely. There are many of those movies. And then you, you choose one of these profession tracks and move directly to the first in yes, the, yes, the lowest rung. Now, I pick that because I've got a nudge of left. So if I play this next, I'll go even deeper into the hellhole of piracy. Yeah. So um, this looks like uh, a pretty, pretty good thing. Now, um, I'm able to play because my sway in this starting omen it gives everyone a sway of four. I'm able to play both of these actions. So one of the actions is to play the ship here. And place the ship out on the map. Yes. I'll place it here. Now, I'll, I'll, I'll explain a little bit later why I'm placing it here instead of on the map. But I'll just say the other action is to draw a new Haven card. And I'll just draw one at random here. Uh, this one. Okay, so now, and now that was my, uh, turn my turn. Play. That was my, my turn. Yes, that was your turn. And then I think I'm gonna follow your lead and, and do a marriage with one of my Haven what? cards. I'm gonna go here. Uh, what? I saw her first. Well, that's. Uh, <sighs> my this always sister. happens. And then, uh, and then. When I'm here on the blue, I can't play this Haven card effect anymore. Um, uh, correct, you cannot. So those are only possible to do. You can if, do if you are a teenager, a callow teenager. When you're a teenager, and that's when you are on this problem. So I can't. Otherwise, I could have used some maybe some card here to to do things with you. But instead, I'm going to play my ship. And now, as you say, uh, I will switch place with you because what? I I flip in that direction. So you saw he was. Pretty fast going towards the the, the far end here, but uh, Father Brill calling. Take this nudge here. It looks like a cross, doesn't it? Oh, excellent! So I will not do this. <sighs> what? So instead, I moved here. Uh, yes. I marry into a a pre preacher's. I marry a preacher's Yes, daughter. yes. This is That's um, a song, right? Yeah, well, it is a song. I think it's a plot of um, African Queen. You know, if you love the old tall ship, um, uh, C.S. Forrester is one of them. But anyway, 
Um, Humphrey uh, Bogart, yes. Son, no. of, son of a preacher man. I know that was a daughter of a preacher man. Okay, I'm mixing things up. So I, 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 I do that instead, and then I play this card. Uh, and as you can see, this you can't see it there, but we can show this is nudging uh, in that direction. And then I will end up over here. All right. And you place your ships, or so. So these nudge things is very important. Oh, how super you, important. How you navigate on these boards, and that's also important for which victory condition you you can reach. If uh, a, if you have a bad nudge, but you want to play it anyway, you could end up in mutiny or midlife crisis. Or well, you want this ship here, and here's a little ship thing. Yeah, and then on that one there was some other uh, icon. Uh, it's a fort, but um, if you want to fortify something, you could, you know, easily fortify one of one of my um, Spanish colonies. Yeah, but I don't want to fortify his colonies. I want to fortify mine eventually. So I, I choose not to do that action. I don't have to do all the actions. I have the option to. So my boat go, uh, my ship go over there, and we have done the play phase, in which we will follow. Then the fourth part is the sail phase. Sail phase. So we'll see how this goes. We begin with Spain, and Spain is unfortunately, I should not have bid on this ship. I should have done a buried treasure bidding or something, which I didn't explain, but... Um... And this, what I he, what he mean by that is you can, instead of choose the first card, you can blindly say, I take the second card, don't know what it is, and then you get to auction that out instead. Yeah, this is an alternative auction. If you are going to auction your turn, you can always announce it to be buried treasure in which you're actually bidding not on the top card but the one underneath now this is just a rosetta stone and it um you know deciphers all the icons you can find on a card um on a market card or your haven cards but it also has a little um legality table on the bottom and now what is legality my legality is plunder, and his legality is conquistador. So how am I interpreting these, and how are these important? The problem, the situation is legality is just what kind of captaining is. Is he, you know, an R, um, walk the plank, burn them all, or is he a conquistador, burn everything that's not Spanish sort of guy? So. The interpretation of this is that I've hired, as a Spain, I've hired under the table, presumably, a, a noted pirate. Um, the problem with hiring someone with plunder legality for Spain is that they're not allowed into Spanish ports. Now, they're allowed to any other port, um, but to take treasure, a plunderer always burns it down. The only exception is that a plunderer can sail into your own colony and take it legally, but Spain doesn't have that option. Um, every other player does, so I cannot use this ship to pick up treasure. So I'm going to skip my phase because there's not much else I can do that's useful with this ship. He's, but he's not useless this turn. Um, I do have two Haven cards and we'll perhaps see if this comes into use or not. But it's your turn. It's my turn. And, and I want to sail because I have a, a conquistador and the conquistador can go down here, get the treasure uh, loaded on, on the ship and then move to take Europe. it to Europe. And that's that's what you're supposed to do. And there is no limit, since this simulates a year, there's not really a limit to how, how far you can move. That's but it's point. important to tell how you move, because the other players may, through these Haven cards we talked about before, uh, uh, attack you. And the Haven card lets you attack, uh, then this tells ambush. you- yeah. Ambush. Yes, yeah. Ambush, and it tells you where you have positioned your, your, your ability to ambush your, your pirate. 
a fleet of sorts. Uh, and that's, that's where you can do that. And, uh, and then you also have these actions. Okay, so now it's your turn to sail. Yes. And you get to start your ship at one of these two treasures. Yeah, and I think, uh, I mean, I could, it could be smart for me to go here, because as we will see soon, when I move, it will be faster to, to, uh, to Europe. But let's, just for this gameplay sake, go to uh, Curaçao here. And I am, as mentioned before, a buccaneer. No, I'm not. I'm a conquistador. You're a conquistador. So this means that you, um, since 40% uh, of the Spanish fleet at this time were foreigners uh, hired by the king to carry treasure back to Europe, you are one of them. You're a British under hired to the king. So you go into the port of Comana, or I'm sorry, Coro, Venezuela, to pick up its pearls legally, saying I'm commissioned by the king. And so we load the treasure on your conquistador ship. Yeah. Now you've got to get back to Europe somehow. I have to, and, and I cannot go here through the nice... Uh, yeah, the Caribbean current is against you. There's a current here, these arrows showing where I can go. Um, and I can go where there's nothing, so I could go here. But I cannot go here, here, or here. Port Royal is your only to choice. To Port Royal. Uh, and I was hoping I for this, for uh, and strike you... your colors. I have Port Royal. My ship is in there, and I want this treasure. All right. So, so you use your your Haven card. I'm going to go card. ahead and discard it to the Haven deck. Yeah. And now, because you did so, you can attack me. Uh, as well, we it's, it's, yeah. What we do, we each take a battle card. Yeah. You're gonna pick one of your four um, tactics on here, uh, and I'll mention them. There's boarding, where you jump on board with uh, sabers and pistols. Uh, you can seize the weather gauge, which means you maneuver your ship to so that the enemy is downwind that gives you a big positional advantage in fighting you can flee like the scurry scurvy dog you are or you can surrender and just uh, uh, not risk losing your ship but you give up the treasure so um, what we do is you pick one of them and um, in secret in secret, and, this, and then this, we'll reveal. Uh, this little, this little, uh, these four tactics and how they they are chosen against each other, and also a little bit about what your your legality of the ship is. That will tell you uh, what the result of the battle is. So it's an intricate battle system where tactics you just choose tactics. Really. Yeah, and the important thing is you've got a better seamanship. So I'm fighting at a disadvantage here. This is. All right, kind so bad. since I'm a better, better seamanship, I chose to be the one who maneuvered my ship as using the sea's weather gauge. Uh, I chose sea's weather gauge as well. All right, how smart was that? I, well, I that's going to let you talk. Yeah, so All it's, right, it says worst seamanship loses their flagship. And now, what, we, what we look here is sea's weather gauge versus sea's weather gauge. Yes, Those two against each other and there's effect. So worth all the information you need for these battle cards is, uh, is right on the battle card. So, so yeah. it's, it's pretty easy. You don't have to look at a matrix or table anywhere. So the worst seamanship loses their flagship. Pirates seize cargo if they now have more ships. Uh, you were the worst seaman. You lose your flagship. This flagship is discarded to the pile. And then uh, you have no pirates, so you can't seize any treasure. So I sail on gloriously uh, all the way through the, the, these wonderful areas. To Very scenic areas. Tris Island. Guatan, Tris Island. This is in New Louisiana. New Providence. And then to this Europe. Is the Bahamas, to Europe. So what happens in Europe? Uh, because you're a conquistador, you give your treasure to the king. And the king takes it and puts it on his war coffer. And this is important. This is just one of the four uh, ways to win the game, and it's the Sun King victory. And, and uh, that's just an example on the, the victory condition in themselves in this game is, is relatively simple and straightforward. 
in this case, have nine war coffer placed here. And then if you are the royalist, uh, you can grab the victory. Yeah, if you're in the extreme royalist position and all the war coffers are filled, you win instantly. This is nine coffers. This represents a nine years war. And uh, you are um, the favorite of a king who becomes the dictator of all of Europe using the treasures of the new world. Yeah. Okay, so that happened. And, uh, uh, but you get your reward for this. And I do get a reward, which is two gold. Yes, two gold for every case. chest. And you, one ship can only carry one chest. Yeah. Now, so, I, w I want to say right now, though, there's a national pride rule um, that we've adopted. Um, this um, is to prevent cold starts. So if you lose your last colony, you get to draw one from the colony deck. If you lose your last mission, you get to draw one from the mission deck. And if you lose your last ship, like, you get a ship from the... Yeah, so, give me this. It goes in my hand. It's not useful right now. So now, um, that's it for yeah. this first and this, uh, four years. So we had the goods phase, the goods year, the auction, the play, and the sale. And then it continues... Goods, auction, play, sale. Goods, auction, play, sale. So his card, he will be able to play this uh, yeah, when it comes to yeah. the play phase. Ink, and maybe even another ship if it buys one in the auction. Uh, before we start with the next good phase, we check who is the most righteous again. And now, because of what we did on this profession track, uh, I am actually close. Because you're the missionary. Yeah, so, so this one switched place. And, we and I'm the pirate, so yeah. I'm not so righteous as you. Um, true, true. Uh, bloodthirsty, but not so successful pirate. Not yet, who knows. Uh, and that's, uh, that's the turn, and then the turns continue, and you use all these strategies. Yeah. Uh, so uh, that segues into these victories. You already mentioned, Wally, the, the royalist victory. That's when you fill up the war coffers. Uh, you can also win, as a professional pirate, the El Patron victory. And this is if uh, you get at least two peerages, um, a relic. These are priceless artifacts that very occasionally appear in the game by actions. Uh, help you in this victory, too, and you'd win. But you have to visualize what the Caribbean would be like um, after a royalist victory, they'd become an utter vassal of a centralized, um, all-powerful European king. After an El Patron victory, um, you become the godfather of the Caribbean, a little bit like uh, Colombia under Pablo Escobar, the drug lord. If you win a Tea Party victory, you need um, a certain number of rebellious citizens of any color and um, if you do then the entire Maine erupts in an independence movement and becomes its own country assuming it wins the war and then final victory is abolition victory uh, if you're in the extremist missionary position you've got at least one peerage you know that was a duke and lord or whatever and all the slaves are freed um, by your actions, either by um, slave revolts or liberating them um, with ships or intercepting slave ships, then you win the game instantly as the abolitionist. And I'll say again, I already mentioned it, but I'll say again that uh, Spain was the first country to, um, the first uh, abolition activist appeared at this time. Um, especially this character here, um, Bartolomeu Las Casas. So, that's more or less the game. the game. Yeah, that's more or less the game. Um, and um, I'm angry you end in such a strong position, but... Um, well, it's, uh, there, there's, there's many opportunities to turn this around. However, I don't think you would have managed. Not you can play this on TTS, yes. by the way. On TTS, there is, there is a version of it. Um, and uh, and yeah. And what if I wanted to pre-order it? Yes. So if you want to pre-order this game, uh, this you go to the Iron Game Design uh, web store, uh, IronGameDesign.com, and there you will find uh, a link immediately. There will also be a link in the description uh, to get to this. 
uh, this hot game. Hot game? How hot? It's so hot that it's now the hottest game in the world. So this has been today the hottest game, uh, like the hottest game in the world. Uh, According to the Geek okay. list, which is updated every day. So when yeah, you see yeah, this, it's this enthusiast group. Yeah, um, so now it's the, probably not uh, the hottest anymore. But it was when we recorded this video, actually. That, that changes a lot over time. Hey, yes, it, yes, it does. So, um, and it comes out, hopefully... Um, it will come out next year? Yeah, during next year, depending on how long time the, the design process will take for, for yeah, the new yeah. and then the, the finalizing of art and, and ironing and out of design stuff and, and layout rulebook. So hopefully next summer we will print this and then hopefully uh, early 2024 it will arrive at the play, play tables on your table if you choose to pre-order it. Yeah, yeah, it's a super special, you, you get quite a discount. Yes, so, so uh, during this uh, pre-order uh, we have now, there will be a heavily discounted price. Uh, we had a little bit more discount now because we're doing it not on Kickstarter, but directly on the, on the webpage, then we can have even more discount. And then if you order it before, uh, uh, December 15, there's a super early bird where you get two pro packs and this discounted price. Then running from December 15 until uh, early January uh, 2023, there is called the, the early bird where you get one extra promo pack for free. Uh, and then it's just after that is pre-ordered to the, to the discounted price after that. And those uh, promo packs will probably contain uh, some material to start the game at uh, different time periods and maybe even a way to link those promo packs so you can play the game several times. Yeah, I'm discussing with Bjorn alternatives yeah. here. Um, it's not, it, doesn't, it hasn't been finalized. Yeah, yet. not finalized. It could be though, I'm, I'm, I sort of like the idea of a later period set in the you know Hollywood age of yeah. privacy. Yeah, and it might be that you have a stepping stone between them, so you can oh yeah, yeah, sure. The, the things you do here might affect how, how that plays out. But it will see. That would be the next century. The previous century could be something where Spain is trying to establish colonies and maybe uh, everyone would be more on an even footing because other countries would be yeah. struggling too, instead of it being the Spanish main. Okay. Okay. So thank you so much for for uh, looking all through the video all the way until here, and uh, I hope you find the game interesting. And if so, that you you back it. Uh, and there is also this is a, um, a, a prototype, but there are a deluxe version uh, which has a lot of more fancy items and a normal version. Right. These are just tokens we stole yes. from. Yeah, I think back striking as, or something. Yeah, and Greenland. Yeah, as mentioned, that's uh, how we made the prototype. Okay. Okay. Thank you again. Bye bye.